Let us reject the impulse to harden ourselves to others' suffering and instead make a habit of empathy. What are distributed energies? Go home tonight and you have all the energy you need in your backyard. The sun shines all over the world every single day. The wind blows across this earth every day. Everywhere our feet tread, we have a hot red thermal core underneath that planet. Wherever we have municipal waste, we have potential energy. Wherever there's water, we have hydroelectricity. Wherever we have agricultural and forestry waste, they can be converted back to energy. On the ocean tides, and most of our urban population on the oceans, those tides are coming in and out every day. We call these distributed energies, renewable energies, because they're found in some proportion in every square inch of the water and land on this little earth. The European Union has committed itself to third industrial revolution. I was privileged enough to develop this for the EU. It was endorsed by the EU Parliament in 2007, and we're now rolling it out across Europe. I'd love to share it with you in America, because you're going to say, why don't we have this here? There are four pillars to this third industrial revolution. Pillar one, the EU has committed itself to 20% renewable energy by 2020. That's one third of all the electricity in Europe. Let me back up for a moment. People say, oh, Europe, Schmurup. You know, that's a museum. We go there on vacation. <laughs> My friends, we talk about the G2, the U.S. and China, reality check. The European Union has been a political union since 1992, headquarters in Brussels. The 27 member states of the EU, 500 million people from the Irish Sea to the doorsteps of Russia, the GDP of their 27 states exceeds the GDP of the 50 states of the United States of America. And if you put the wealth of the U.S. and China together, Europe almost matches it. It's not a military power, so we dismiss it. But what I'd like to suggest, it's the lead economy, and it's a laboratory. Pillar one, we've committed to 20% renewables by 2020 across Europe, a third of the electricity. Pillar two, buildings. Buildings are the main cause of CO2. They are responsible for a third of the energy use and a third of the CO2. By the way, the number three cause of climate change is worldwide transport. Now, we spend a lot of time on buildings, getting them more efficient, taxing them, and a lot of time on transport. Anyone know what the number two cause of climate change is? Yeah, it's cattle. It's cows. Cows, cows, cows. Meat production and consumption is number two. I wrote a little, little book called Beyond Beef in 1991 about this. The cattle industry said I'd gone off the deep end. But yes, cattle production, beef production and consumption, the number two cause of climate change. Because while they produce a smaller amount of CO2, they produce most of the methane, which is 22 times more potent than CO2 as a global warming gas, and a lot of the nitrous oxides because of the fertilizers. And of course, as you know, as a billion people go to bed hungry tonight, Here's the real injustice. They're going hungry, yet a third of all the agricultural land in this world is being used to grow feed grain for cattle and not food grain for people. So the wealthy, all of us, can get high up on the food chain with grain-fed beef. Then we die of diseases of affluence like heart attacks, strokes, cancer, and diabetes. Our poor brothers and sisters don't have access to the land because there's not enough food grain being grown. They die of diseases of poverty. A crazy world. Yet not one government leader in 192 countries of this planet has made one single statement about the number two cause of climate change. Even though when Mr. Pachari, who headed up the UN climate panel, received the, the Nobel Prize along with Al Gore that year, they asked Mr. Pachari what's the first thing everyone should do if they want to reduce the climate change and heal the planet. He said, stop eating meat. Do you know, up until two months ago, Al Gore would never, ever discuss it, even once, and finally an interviewer trapped him, and he just said it in passing? Are we so frightened of raising this question of beef consumption for fear that people will say, I have a right to eat whatever I want, and we're going to save our species? We're not herbivores by design. We're not, we're not carnivores. We are omnivores. We're designed for lots of fruits and vegetables, occasional amount of meat. Remember I said at the beginning, forager, hunter? I didn't say hunter, forager. So that's just a parenthetical aside, all right? <laughs> um, first pillar of the Third Industrial Revolution, renewable energy. Pillar two, buildings. In Europe, we are going to convert every single existing building, every office, factory, home, technology park, and shopping center to a power plant. 
in the next 25 years, millions of buildings. Every building will have solar on the roof, vertical wind on the walls, heat pumps under the ground, recycle the garbage, forestry waste in the agricultural areas, coastal tides coming in on the, for the urban areas on the coast. Everyone has their own power plant. Pillar three, we have to store this energy because the sun isn't always shining here in California and the wind isn't always blowing. They're intermittent energy, so we've committed 8 billion euros to hydrogen rollout. Hydrogen stores these energies, like digital stores media. So when the sun is hitting your roof, you create a little electricity. If you don't need some of it, you electrolyze water. The anode, the cathode, you slept through this class. This is chemistry. The anode, the cathode, the water, and the hydrogen goes bubbling out in the tank. Now you recall this, right? And then when you need the electricity, when the sun isn't shining on your roof, that hydrogen is converted back to electricity. Please don't come up to me afterwards and say, isn't that a loss of energy? Yes, it's called the second law of thermodynamics. Whenever you convert energy, you lose energy. If we were to actually take a graph of how much energy you lose in conversion and getting oil, coal, gas, and uranium from the, the, cent, the, the entry point to us, it's through the roof compared to the hydrogen storage. Then pillar four of this third industrial revolution. This is where the distributed communication revolution comes together with distributed energies to give us a third industrial revolution. We actually take the same exact technology that created the internet. It's actually identical. And we take the power grid of the EU, hopefully next America, and we turn it into an intergrid that acts exactly like the internet. So that when millions and millions and millions of buildings are producing their own energy, storing it with hydrogen like storing media and digital, then what they don't need, they share peer-to-peer -peer across these smart distributed grids all across Europe, hopefully all across America eventually, and Asia and everywhere else. This is a third industrial revolution. This is power to the people. Overused it in 1968. The good news, our kids don't know history, so they'll think they recreated the term. <laughs> This is, this is distributed capitalism, or if you like, it's a hybrid between capitalism and socialism because it requires entrepreneurialism. Everyone's an individual player, but it also requires sharing peer-to-peer. -peer. Actually, it's neither capitalism or socialism. When young people are up on the web, they don't say I'm center right or center left, but they are collaborating in open source com commons and sharing information. Huh? That's a new type of mentality. And this third industrial revolution answers a question we couldn't answer for 30 years. Governments would say, Mr. Rifkin, come on. We, we love windmills and solar roofs. Who wouldn't? But you can't run a global economy on solar roofs and windmills and garbage collection for energy. Come on. That's soft energy. It has a place. It has a niche. But you need hard energy, coal, oil, gas, uranium, to run a global economy. We couldn't answer the question for 30 years. We now can. It's called second-generation grid IT. For the last seven or eight years now, we've had grid IT, which allows us to take software and connect hundreds of thousands of desktop computers. When we connect them, the distributed power of all those little teeny computers together exceeds by a magnitude whatever you could get from the biggest centralized supercomputers you could ever put online. We can take grid IT to energy. When millions and millions and millions of buildings across America are collecting the energy around the site where they are, storing it in hydrogen like you store digital media, and then sharing across the North American landmass, the distributed ability of that power exceeds anything you could ever imagine with the most centralized nuclear and coal-fired power plants you would ever put online. And every young person here that grew up on file sharing, we used to call this cheating, file sharing, <laughs> They understand distributed power. The music companies did not see file sharing coming. And then when it came, they tried to stop it with encryption and legislation. But what they didn't grasp is this. Apparently, millions and millions of little kids around the world have actually nothing else to do after school but come home, putz around with the software, and try to figure out how to share it and get it for free. You can't beat millions of little There's too many of them. <laughs> so what happened is the music companies have gone out. 